them. So we tell them. We are the people. We are the people. The mighty, mighty people. The mighty, mighty people. Justice for the people Everywhere we go Everywhere we go
They think it's a game. They think it's a job. Oh, no, I need to hear that. They think it's a game. They think it's a job. 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 Ain't no game. It ain't no job. This ain't no game. It ain't no job. This ain't no game. This ain't no joke. This ain't no game. This ain't no joke. I'm even going to play out his ass too long. Basically, I'm seeing this evening. Uh, someone asked what they're doing. Uh, we're getting a protest in Russia. Amen. 
that, that walk that we just did, we're getting ourselves in protest condition. You know, that's what this does. It gets us in protest condition. Not just our feet, but we're getting our minds in protest condition. We're getting our hearts in protest condition. And we've got several people that are going to speak uh, this evening. This is a commemoration. It is not a demonstration. It is a commemoration. Uh, we're commemorating the life uh, of a young man whose life was taken on. We're commemorating the, the life of a lot of young people whose lives have been taken to aid. We're here to uh, address and talk about community violence. Community violence. Our role, our responsibility. And so we're going to have several people. We're going to have uh, Josh is the trauma program manager here. Uh, and we're going to ask Josh to come just in his own way. He's going to share with us. Um, and uh, we want you to just put close attention to what people are saying. We want you to give them your undivided attention. We're going to show them some respect. We, may, we won't have to say my check. You know what my check means? It means be quiet. We don't have to do that tonight, right? We're going to ask Josh to come. Thank you all for coming here this evening and being here tonight at Carter Glennon Children's Hospital. Well, so much. Appreciate you coming out. So, speaking tonight, thank you again for coming out to Carter Glennon Children's Hospital as we honor this young man who lost his life almost 30 years ago. We care for kids from all across the city here. We know that gun violence is something that we deal with each and every day. I can't speak for the other trauma centers in St. Louis, but I know my numbers are going up. In 2015, we had 37 children wounded by guns. In 2016, we were at 45, and last year we were at 61. And this year, as of this morning, we're at 23. We know that not can spike free. We know that it also doesn't always end in death. A lot of times, it just ends in disability. We do not for our time, not only that child, but to the entire family. So we try to take care of that entire family here. We've got an ambulance coming by. We try to take care of that entire family here because we know that small families are incredibly important for our patients. We don't need to help them heal. One thing we're really proud to be a part of is the Life Outside of Violence Project that's getting kicked off here in St. Louis in July. We have four level one trauma centers here. Myself at Cardinal Glennon Children's, St. Louis Children's, just about 10 blocks away. Barnes Hospital and St. Louis University that's about 500 feet from here. What we're doing is we're hiring social workers through a grant to go and provide intervention to these kids. Not only just to gun violence victims, but to all victims of violence. Because what we hope to do is just interrupt that circle of violence, providing therapy, care coordination, not here at the hospital, but at their homes and in their communities, because we know that's where it really needs to be. So that'll be kicked off here in July fantastic project sponsored by the Missouri Foundation for Health. So thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, Josh. Too often people ask us when we've been protesting, too often people say, well, a police officer that killed a young black person when we go to the street to catch up. What happens when we have community violence? Where are the people? These are the people. What happens? These are the people. We are showing up. So we've been showing up. We continue to show up. And all we're trying to say tonight is that it's going to take a whole community to address this. You are the community. We are the community. Young folk have been showing up and showing out. Speaking of, we had the March of Life a few, uh, two, several weeks ago. Young folk organized over 15,000 people. Organized over 15,000 people. There is hope in our young folk, but what they're doing, they say, we're not going to wait until you tell us it's our 20. We're not going to wait until it's somebody that we know. All lives. All lives are sacred. And so they're going to ask Damon and Chris Cree to come and they're going to speak. They're going to speak to us. We want to do some things. So, Damon. I'm Lauren. Hi, I'm Maggie. Lead organizers of the March for Our Lives St. Louis. Um, so 
Reverend Gray touched on this a little bit, but if you don't know, this is a movement that works to demand action from our legislators on the issue of gun violence. And while this, is, while this movement was originally sparked by a school shooting, we work to recognize and combat all forms of gun violence, especially that which plagues our city. Um, so I won't talk for too long, but I just want to say thank you to Bruce for his hard work to combat gun violence.
And what about those? Why don't we hear about those? What about every death that has been resulted from racism? How about the fact that St. Louis leads our nation in the number of police brutality and police deaths? This is a problem, and it's been a problem for a very long time. So, we need to create change. Everyone, everyone, needs to recognize Black Lives Matter. And we need to fight so that no more people are killed in any situation. Not in their homes, not in their cars, not in the streets, and just no more and nowhere. One of my quotes that I refer, refer to in these moments is, I think about this, I think about windows cannot be replaced, or windows can be replaced, but black bodies cannot. And so, we need to keep fighting. We need to reach the justice that we deserve in this city and in this world. I am so thankful for Representative Franks. He has used his strength and his courage to represent his people and fight for justice. He has made St. Louis and our community a better place and a more just, safe, and strong community. I've seen Bruce on the Missouri House floor at the March for Our Lives, at Moms to Man Action meetings, at rallies and protests, giving powerful and inspirational speeches, and helping all of us be better people and better citizens. In everything he does, he does the right thing and is a change agent that we so desperately need. I've heard his story, I've seen him in action, and I'm so thankful for him. At one event, he said that how come whenever there is a Black Lives Matter movement, and rallies that it's immediately labeled as a protest. Why isn't it called a march? Why isn't a march for justice? Well, we just marched. We just fought for justice, and we fought for peace in our communities and for a better world, and an end to violence. I am here because I believe in what is right for the world. I am here because of the injustice and racism within our own community. I am here because we have seen too many people get killed, and we cannot see any more. I am here because black lives do matter. I am here because I'm a white alley and I need to shut up when necessary and speak out when I need to. We are here to raise awareness of senseless violence, the need for peace, the freedom for justice and righteousness. We are all on the right side of history. We are all together fighting the good fight. Together we can end gun violence and stop the useless, innocent, and unnecessary killings. Thank you for all being here today. Let's remember all of the good things, especially Christopher Harris. And let's fight for that. Let's fight for justice. Let's fight for equality and equity. Please keep it up. We are not backing down. Thank you, Mr. The tears are real. It doesn't have to be your brother. It doesn't have to be your sister. It doesn't have to be your son. It doesn't have to be your daughter. If you recognize that all life is sacred, then it will touch you. And someone said, I wish I had shown up before parking. Dr. King said, The time is always right to do right. So you may not, you're not too late, you're right on time. We don't have time to save the next one. To save the next one. We're going to ask moms. Now, moms do not action. I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor 35 years. I can't tell you how many young people I have been. In violence. And there is never a sermon that is adequate enough. There are never nerves that are adequate enough. Moms understand. Dad, you are right. Mom's understanding. We're going to ask Becky to come. She represents mom. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you, Representative Bruce Franks, for getting everybody together today and for including us in this day. Um, Bruce Franks and I have a lot in common. Uh, we had the year 1991. My father was shot and killed in St. Louis in 1991. Bruce Franks lost his brother, Christopher Harris. My dad's name was Christian James. So we both lost a Chris in 1991. So this issue was very close and dear to my heart. 
Um, since 1991, I didn't know what to do until I found the group Moms to Main Action for Gun Sense in America, which formed the day after the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. And like, you know, the March for Our Lives, we got together after it affected school, after it affected white kids, honestly. But it didn't take me long. It took me like a week after Sandy Hook to realize this doesn't just affect my kids. This is happening day in, day out. It's been happening for years right here in St. Louis and all across the country. And so we're not just fighting for our kids, we're fighting for everybody. Um, you don't have to be a mom to be part of Moms Demand Action. We take aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, uh, everybody's welcome. Um, so we fight for a lot of legislation in Jefferson City. We see Bruce Franks, and Doug Lavender, and Crystal Quaid. We hope to see Kevin Fitzgerald there soon. And a lot of our representatives there because a lot of these laws that these people make, they're created by people who want to hang on to power. Um, laws like Stand Your Ground, which enable the person who murdered Trayvon to get away scot-free. So we fight against Stand Your Ground. We fought against it here in Missouri. We fight against it in every single state across the country. Even open carry laws, they're only group good for one group of people. Uh, Tamir Rice, John Crawford, open carry didn't apply to them. They lost their lives. They're holding toy guns, not even real guns. So we go and we fight for legislation because it's not right. Uh, and I'm glad and honored to use uh, my voice and my power and uh, the father, moms, and dads, and aunts and uncles that we have with us to keep going and fighting for change. Um, so we're here, right here with you. We're not going to give up. We will fight as long as it takes. So thank you for including us in this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Carlos Dyer, we're going to ask Carlos to come. Let's come. I use the microphone, but usually I don't use the microphone because we're so loud. But um, I met Bruce about five years ago, and um, he became my brother instantly. I would say um, we became brothers in the struggle, brother, brothers in the fight, but can't nobody convince me that me and Bruce ain't been brothers this entire time since we been knowing each other. Can tell me that we ain't been brothers since kids. That's how close we became. Um, losing a sibling. I mean, lost period is crazy, but losing a sibling, it's like an indescribable feeling. It's like you lost a part, a big part of yourself because oftentimes your siblings are your first friends in life. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then to lose a sibling who is older than you, that hurts. And uh, that's one of the things that me and Bruce share. We know that loss all too well. For myself, I know it twice. A little brother and a big brother. And as a two, uh, little brother in 2006, um, we found a gun in my aunt's couch. It was her husband's. And he's pulled it off the couch. We went off and hit him in the head. And then in 2013, my brother was killed by the police. So, um, both of my brothers was lost as a dude to some something to do with guns. So, I try my best to be in the community to try and get a lot of the youth to solve their situations before it even gets that far to where a gun becomes, I mean, has to be involved. Because one thing that me and Bruce talked about is the fact when things like this become normal to where, like, it's every they were in the point, I mean, to the point where we are becoming desensitized to it. You know, when you heard about somebody dying, it used to really get to your soul, right? It used to really get to your core, but it's getting to the point now we're becoming so desensitized to it because we see it so often. It's like, oh, since he says died, that's crazy. But it's not crazy. You know what that is? Are there any veterans out here? That's a problem with PTSD. So when you can see something and you relive it, and then to the point where it doesn't even affect you anymore. Those are certain parts of PTSD. And a lot of us suffer from that. Like I tell people all the time, you don't have to be in the military or go to war just to know what that feels like when you've been living in traumatic communities your entire life. Um, and I often hear people say, what can we do to fix this? What can we do to fix this? I tell them, 
just do that part. If you do your part, and the people around you do that part, you can see some change. It may start in little small groups. If it starts in your neighborhood, make sure that we do everything we can so that they can branch out. I kind of watched groups over the past four years go from literally the stage, catching bodies lyrically, to going to the state capitol, literally catching bodies. He, when I say he has so much passion in him, man, if I, I said, if, like, if we could take a little bit of the passion through that and give it to everybody, I think it would be all right because everybody would understand the fight, man. And I watched him do this inside of his district where he decided to run for state representative. He cleaned it up piece by piece. There was a day when we stopped two young brothers who I know they were getting ready to rob that man in front of this business. We stopped them. But you see, we didn't stop them by yelling at them. We stopped them by offering them a job. Bruce gave them something to do. He said, you know what, y'all can clean the window. All right, that's the pizza. Gave them some money. And he it there were so many different like restrictions on what I think to be a boys club. We said that didn't make sense. So that's when Bruce decided he like, you know what? I need to change all that. And he said he was going to run the state representative, and he did it. And I watched him clean that area time and time. And he's moving further north with it. He's moving closer to the PNP body area, over to the O'Fallon um, O'Fallon Place area, all the way across the road. When I say He's working really hard. And all we have to do is do our part by assisting him and doing it in our communities. Because my goal is to go back to the fifth world where I grew up, where I've suffered and took loss in. The place where I too took a gunshot, um, a gunshot to the head. And go back and change that area the same way Bruce did. So I just want y'all to continue doing your part and continue to fight. This is Captain Melvin. I don't know about y'all. I want to go to Bruce. So let me do that real quick. We've got one more speaker. What we've, what we've tried not to do, we've tried not to make it, it's going to be political. But we're trying not to make it political. Did that make any sense? It's going to be political because it's going to take the political process to change things too, but we don't want it to be political. Because we've got a lot of elected officials that have come out, down here, we, we started with us back on Russia, so a lot of them came out to show their support. But I've, I've seen, and there have been many, but I've seen one in particular, I've seen her walk with Bruce, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, she's been a champion uh, in the state senate, she's been a champion in the city, Senator Jamila Machine. Lord. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me first and foremost thank each and every one of you, you know, for taking uh, time out of your schedule to join my brother, Representative Franks, uh, with the journey to come and celebrate Christopher Harris. Let's give it up for our brother, Bruce Franks. Yeah, I truly believe that if Christopher was here, today. He would be marching in the streets with us every single time there was a march. Because I can feel the spirit of Christopher Harris in his brother. And I don't think it's just because of Christopher Harris that he has been ignited to fight the good fight on behalf of those individuals who have been shot by way of gun violence. I believe that he's doing it because he truly, truly, truly cares about the young men and women that are constantly dying each and every day in the streets of the city of St. Louis and throughout this country. So, Representative Franks came to me as a senator. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of people come to senators if they want to get bills passed after moving out of the house. So Representative Franks came to me and he said that this is a very, very important piece of legislation. He said this legislation is going to be able to shine the light on the trauma.